Hey, it's Joe Glantz, me Automator, and here's another issue of uh, what we automated this week. Now, I wasn't actually planning to record this video this week, um, just because I thought, okay, we've been covering this a lot every week. But when I ran my script, let's go ahead and do this. Um, you'll see why I thought, okay, let's walk through it, because it's kind of funny. Um, so again, I'm using QAP to launch it, just because that's where I have a lot of my tools. So this script runs and looks on my computer and says what files that are AutoHockey extensions have been modified in the last week. Um, looks across all my drop So 287 files. Oh boy, we've had a busy week, right? And um, and I'll get into the why. We kind of cheated here, but um, I'll get the idea here in a second. So this clean subtitles. So we automated, we were trying to use the YouTube API for extracting all of our subtitles. And interesting enough, they actually cap out at a very low um, number that you can pull every day. It, it, each subtitle call, costs like 200 credits. Now that you, you get like 10,000 a day for free, but when you have 1300 videos, that adds up pretty fast. So we used a Chrome extension and Irfan did it with Rafadium to go through and loop across the Chrome extensions, a free tool that'll grab the subtitles. So he looped across all of our videos and then got those subtitles. And then of course, because you know, we're so far, maybe in another six months or so, YouTube will really start having more accurate subtitles because of AI but um, there's a lot of issues with them. So we go through and clean them. That's what this clean subtitles one is. Um, the getting subtitles still obviously related to that. Let's let's make this a little wider here. Okay. Um, so these are all done in the YouTube API stuff. Uh, now the CJSON, um, I had reached out to Geek Dude for a, a question on something else. And he's like, no, I don't know how to solve it. But by the way, I finally published my CJSON library. So we were trying this, to use the CJSON library in pulling the stuff, and we noticed the emojis weren't coming out correctly. The Unicode characters were, I think, being encoded in a certain way. And he let us know there's a flag that we can set to say, no, keep don't don't translate those em emojis. Um, leave them in their normal state because we're getting UTF-8 characters and we want to be able to have them in the titles when we show them like on our chat bot on the automator for videos we've covered and stuff. So we we'll want to have those actual emojis, not the... You know encoded version of it so that's what that is also i asked because it, or we had a client ask us to do this but then he never actually wanted it so we didn't publish it but um we have a twitter scheduler so i said well now that we have a list of all of our videos let's go and schedule um do tweets twice a day for across the like 1300 or 1400 videos I think it's actually like almost 1,500 if I remember right now. Uh, there's a lot that are HK Hero calls that are unlisted and private. So um, in reality, I think we have like 1,400 public auto hotkey videos. Anyway, so he was automating posting to my Twitter uh, Twitter or X account, excuse me, um, twice a day of the those videos, right? And of course, we could have, I should tell him we should also get some like blog posts for our main things like Calm and Excel and um, functions right? Things that we publish a lot on, on UIA and ACC. So we should incorporate those as well. That's what those two are. Now this, this is what's funny is you see all these things in here. And again, you know, I, when I first, when we made this during one of these videos, as Ace was here and we made this script for looking at it, I had them organized it by folder and that's what makes it easy to spot during a hero call as one of the things I want to be able to have on the automator is that chat GPT, you know, our bot, understands v2 code so i've been wanting to say you know the the auto hockey help file if you break it down it's actually like a zip version of html files so during a hero call isaias walked through how you can extract those zip file those html files from the zip file the help file and uh and so we got all of the examples and um so these are all like the v2 let's just pull up one here let's see what this one has oh that opened the folder so in here, these are all now, actually, these are all V2, and I wrote them earlier. I'm like, hey, let's go do the same thing for V1. And if I click on this, we should see them on the right. Now, if I pulled up the help file, you'd see that when this is listed, they'd also have often either like a comment or um, a hotkey or something. And we didn't get that, but we did get the actual, these are the examples built into the auto hotkey help file, right? Also, you can find them online. And so I had told um, the guys, I said, hey, why don't we adapt this one to make sure we get that hotkey at the beginning and um, in the comments. 
And then let's do this for both V1 and for V2. And so that'll give us, we can make it a download for people, uh, but we're going to use it for our chatbot to help train ChatGPT on how to do, have some really valid uh, V2 code. So that's what all of these, that's how we got, there were hundreds, if I remember correctly, of, of those. These are all, and I'm just looking at the folder. So these are all, and at some point we'll have a download for those. So um, I think we'll just put them, bundle them all together, both V1 and V2, all in, we'll have subfolders, but we'll have them organized. So depending on which one you want, because it also might be very interesting to have those side by side. You know, maybe we even have Isaiah go through and say, do the V1 and then the V2 right after it, but comment them. Right. So people know which one's which, because that could be really interesting seeing both things side by side, you know, right next to each other um, to see how they're similar and how they're different. Right. That's how I learn a lot of stuff. All right. So um, our drip campaign, we created a couple new drip campaigns where well, we've built a complete, I call it the poor man's drip campaign. You can do automate emails to people. So when people sign up, when they get a download from us or when they sign up for the newsletter, um, they get put onto this drip campaign where we, um, anyone that does that, they get the newsletter, right? What we're also doing is if you're new, we have a really great, I think it's like 18 emails where if you're just learning auto hotkey, it each, every like three days, you get another email giving you the next lesson, right? Well, we created a couple other drip campaigns based on um, trying to recruit people to the hero club or for a call if you're like a manager or entrepreneur, because um, the, a lot of those people want help but don't know how to do it and so we're going to reach out to them and see if they want to call um get dropped now this one i'm going to open it <clears throat> this is pretty cool you know um, if i run it i'm going to go ahead and just launch it now if i hit now it has the browser back button or f2 which is commented out which i, I guess I, since i added the control f2 i don't have to comment it out but if i if i select the file and hit my hotkey it got that path now notice here yeah, see, I'm in the B drive. Here, that's the full path, right? It goes back to the C drive. This B drive is a fake drive. And if I was to give it to someone who didn't who um didn't have access to that, I need I want to get to that full path. So I could just paste here and it would actually navigate me. Oops, I should have got the folder. Um, so so see, this is the same. Now this is the full path, but if I go back. There's this B drive, right? And it just helps us. So Isaiah Surfin and I all have this B drive all pointing to the same files. So it helps us. I can give them a path and they give it to me. And it doesn't matter where anything's stored because our paths are the same, which is really cool. Now, the other option is I can hit Control F1. And so that way, if I hit Control F1, it gets the hyperlink. And I'm just going to paste it here, not that we would use this. But this would allow me to share that file with somebody. It's the so I don't have to come in here, right click and say, um, actually, if I'm on the B drive, see how there's no. Uh, this is a really good example. I should have thought of that. There's no copy path to for the Dropbox, right? But can I just do the alt there? We go back to here now. When I right click on this thing, I can see copy Dropbox link, right? Unfortunately, that's not available when we use the B drive. And it was really annoying because I'd have to go find that other folder. But now I just have a hotkey, right? So it makes it really simple and easy. Um, if you're a Dropbox user, uh, let me know if you want that because we didn't share it because it's just not that helpful for most people. But um, it, it is pretty convenient when you're using that. Um, this FFmpeg ripper. I had found a, an audio book and just wanted to convert the mp3 format so i made it didn't have the m4b format um and so i added that to the list of stuff again here's a cjson which we were working with and now <clears throat> one thing we learned in that the cjson library from geek dude there's also one from um is it tickby is it the guy that does the vs code uh uh intellicent stuff he, uh, they both have CJSON libraries. They're both extremely fast. In the Pickbees, not Gigtoots, was slightly faster. It's, it's honest, honestly, it's like it's so small of a gain. It really probably isn't a noticeable difference, but it was slightly faster. And the the real gotcha was Tickby put his logic for the doing logic on if statements and you know case statements or whatever inside his. Um, C, I forget if it's written C sharp, um, the C sharp code versus Geekdude had it in auto hotkey. And because auto hotkey is just not as efficient as C sharp, it was just runs a slightly bit slower. Um, but all things being equal, 
like I said, I don't think you'd notice a difference. Um, they they basically we were swapping between them, so they're very similar in how they work and the output you get. So there's really not a noticeable difference there. Um, our V2, this one was funny. You know, our, our we, which we've made this one available. It's a great script for notifying, and that's what the little pop ups down here um, we're doing is that that's using our notify class, which can have sound, which I don't know if you heard the sound. It was playing the sound, actually, too. Isaias was recording. He was um, doing his thing, recording our next course, which let me, I'll try to remember to talk about it in a second here. And uh, he wasn't responding to Telegram, so I used our clip share tool to notify him, which popped up on his main screen, which was where he was recording. Because he's told me before in Telegram, it's always on the other screen. And I didn't realize, like, oh, if I use our clip share to message him, it would pop up in his main screen, and therefore, like it, it, it showed up in his video. So he, it, it, we do three to five. Our courses are all three to five minute videos, right? So, um, it's not a big deal to reshoot it. But I said, well, you know, maybe we should see if we can adapt our notify class to allow you to pick a monitor where you want it to be displayed, right? So that way we could have like um, control where it's being displayed, which would be really cool. <clears throat> now, Irfan was looking at that and. He did get it to go to one or two, but I have three, and for whatever reason, the one and two, the the third, it never went to the third. So we're still working on that. I think it had something to do with the identifications of the monitors or something. I forget what it was, but we, I know when we talked about it again during the hero call, we were talking to Isaiah about it, and he's like, yeah, yeah, you have to take care of this. So um, I think we have a handle on how to do that, but it would be nice to be able to say, I want this display on that monitor, right? And we're also trying to get it to be in the center as well, which will be nice. All right, so that's what that is. Um, these, and and now here are, the, here are some of the examples. Now I asked Irfan to convert everything. Let me pull up Prompt Assistant. So Prompt Assistant is our tool for doing snippets and other things. So he's gonna create a library and, and here, you know, of, of like API, here's my syntax writer. This is for auto hotkey, and this is this is actually I think these are with Zaces, and this was mine. Nope, sorry, this is mine. But we both had a V one and V two section, right? We just did it slightly differently. And uh, he's going to create examples of like all the notify ones, all the Excel function library we're going to put into Prompt Assistant. Now, Prompt Assistant, I think it's nineteen ninety nine or something, but it's it's a great tool. And what's really cool is I can highlight this. This is what is Ace how he gave me his. You highlight it and you hit export, and it'll export. That menu, I'm going to hit cancel here. It'll export that menu and everything with it, with the icons and everything too. It's one of the things that I, I dislike about Quick Access pop-up is you export it, even if you do, which isn't easy, and you, you could figure out how to import another one, which sort of works. You don't get all the functionality, and you don't get the icons, which the icons to me, I take a lot of time putting in icons because it's really helpful. So our tool makes it really easy to share stuff. And so we're going to be starting to create libraries or modules um, that we can put on the automator's free downloads. If you own Prompt Assistant, then you can pick it up. Like all those auto hockey examples, we're going to put all those um, into Prompt Assistant, right? So they're at the tips of your fingers. Because when I use this, like let's just say, so see this menu here? I was going to take a screenshot, but it doesn't matter. It can stay up. If I pull up like Notepad, let's do it here where we can see it. Now, when I... My hotkey is the Windows right click, and I click. See those menus? How they line up with these? Well, when I when I come into one and I click it, what? There we go. It'll it'll paste the code that I have in there. And if we look in here, like each of these, they're snippets, right? And it's predominantly meant to be a snippet tool for sending text, and you can assign a hotkey or a hot string. Um, and then you can pick an icon, but it's very simple, very fast to do. Uh, but you now you can also, and I don't, we're going to have to make another video on it, but you could, if you begin it with a certain couple characters and it's like run HK, I forget what it is. It will execute. If you put an auto hotkey code here, it will execute that auto hotkey code, which is pretty cool because it really opens it up to doing a lot more than just snippets. You can do, you know, you can execute any code, just put it in here. And then we have all the functionality of having a hot here, a hot string assignment. Um, so that'll be very cool. I, I'm really excited about that. Um, so those are those examples. The newsletter. Um, I asked Isaiah to spend like an hour during the week with Irfan walking him through our newsletter manager because it's a really complicated script where we get the email addresses of people. And then often people put in bad words and stuff. They're they're just so funny. I just love it. Um, 
anyway, so it's really complicated. We did some, uh, created quite a complex algorithm to evaluate the email address without, we do a lot of stuff so I don't have to see everyone because we get, um, I forget how many we get, a little bit over a hundred a week, I think about that. Um, but those are new. So we get a lot of that more downloads, but we are only checking if we've never seen this email address. Okay, let's see if we should add it to the newsletter. I manually every day evaluate them. Um, and then we have scoring that gets done. If it goes over a threshold, we don't, I don't even see it. We just say it, it's banned. Like if they use a swear word or whatever, I'm like, I'm not even gonna bother, right? I just I just drop them off. If um if there's too many repeated characters or whatever, we have scores that I then manually look at and I quickly choose. There's usually one or two each day that I'll say, oh, let's exclude those guys. But um, yeah, it's a pretty cool, it's just really complicated. And so um, I asked Isaiah to give Irfan an overview because it's 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 just impossible to step into that script. It'd be like saying, look at, hey, let's start programming QAP. And you know, that's like 14,000 lines or something, right? It's it's really big. So yeah. Um, well, let's manage it. Same thing, same thing. Office path. This one is cool, and I need to work on how it. I integrate it with my other stuff. But if it's running, let me go ahead and run it. Oh, that opens a folder. Um, uh, and let's see here. Um, is my hotkey so Control Shift C? So I'm going to run it. Oh, that's funny. Yay! Now let me open Excel. Or Word. Let me open Word. And not that, not that, not that. Oh, this will be fine. So if I hit Control Shift C here, it's it's. So let me let me try the one that doesn't say Joe. Maybe mine got um. Maybe there were some updates and then it didn't get updated. Oh, uh, coffee. It, Get path. Well, I get to report this to Irfan because um something is wrong. What it should do is return the path to this file because uh, it's not easy to find that path. Um, but something clearly has changed. So uh, obviously, I don't use this one a lot, and it's because I hit if I'm an explorer and I hit if I hit Control Shift C. Okay, so. Now, if I'm here and I hit Control Shift C, it copies the path to my clipboard. However, and it should be when I'm in here and I hit Control Shift C, and now that's just having a problem with the com object. It should um, copy the path of that document, which is just a pain to find. So, um, yeah, I'll have to report that to Irfan if there's a problem there. But what I need to do is to get it combined with, and maybe that's what this one is doing because I see it is working with the the Explorer object because um, I have a different one that gets just that, and maybe this one is trying to combine both. And once I get that nailed down, then I can use that one and I'll, because I use it to get the path of whatever I'm in, whether I'm an explorer or a, com a program like Word or PowerPoint or Excel, um, it'd be very handy to have that. Even the site, I think I could use it. And um, WinSCP has a com object where I get the path to a, a select file on the internet. So there's that, let me just get back to this tool. A simple menu. So we we made some cool updates. Let me let me show it in Ultimate Spy. Um, so this is all those other tools we were looking at are all included in this one. I'm going to launch it now. What's really cool now? First off, is if the program is run as an admin, right now it doesn't automatically launch as an admin. It, it, if it detects that there's an admin program, which let me launch Notepad as an admin. As administrator, so that's as out of it now when I launch it. Um, oh, well, mine did, but it should actually say, Hey, we detected that program as an admin. Do you want to relaunch as admin? Right? So that's the one, and maybe I'm not looking at the right version of it, but that's done. But notice these icons, this we didn't have before. And what's cool, and you're gonna say, like, well, that's stupid. Like, I why that doesn't really help me. What it does do is when you drag you drag it on here, okay. I can use ACC. Well, hey, what tools? Our ACC, oh, here's that A, right? So see the A? So this helps you connect if you're not used to it. Hey, this Win32, which tools work with Win32? Well, it's that dark uh, circle. Here are the dark circle ones, right? Where's this pill, UIA viewer? So UIA viewer, if I was looking at that, I'd know where to look down here, right? Some of them, it's very obvious, like fine text in image search, right? 
that would, well, maybe people wouldn't know, right? But that's the point. We give you like a map, a decoder ring that allows you to know which one to go to. So I think that'll really help people. For us, we already know, we know what tools go with what, but if you haven't been doing this a long time, how would you know, right? So I think this is really cool. By the way, we'll have to make a video on it sometime. This alignment was not easy um, because these characters, some of them are wider than others. They take up more bites than others. And so getting those to line up and even, I think this one's actually offset a little to the left, which makes it look like that's off center, but it's not. It's just that this one is moved to the left a bit. But uh, yeah, it, getting that was not, we we spent quite a while internally, me, Isaiah, and Irfan working through that. And uh, it was loads of fun. So let's get back to the list. Um, so we, yeah, we added, we, and we, we swapped out, instead of using automate my task, we put fine text in there. Even though I, I love automate my task, I think it's it's easier to use than fine text. Um, fine text. He borrowed. Uh, I I haven't talked to the guy, but we bar we built automate my task based off of fine text, and then at some point, I'm gonna bet you he saw what we had done, and he borrowed back a lot of the stuff that we put into automate my task. Now it's still to me too complicated of a tool for the average person to just start using. Whereas automate my task, you can use that instantly. But he has a V2 version, and we're trying to stick with all V2 stuff. Um, and it is a great tool, don't get me wrong. It's just when you first start using it, it, there's a lot to understand and it's just not crystal clear. As with any tool, right? When you make them so complex, there's a lot going on. Um, we we made some assumptions in ours to make it simpler. Anyway, um, the discovery tool, this again should have the, let's see if that one actually works with the the um, admin mode. So this one should, this is without the other stuff. Yeah, so that one... Maybe because, no, it just says admin mode required. That's fine. Uh, but the other tools, you'd have to, uh, it would ask you if you want to launch. But mine, I don't have the UAC enabled. So that's probably why it's not, you know, being a problem. It just automatically launches in it. I don't know. But let's go back to here. Marsh JSON, YouTube. So this is still all the stuff. And and this is where our family is getting the actual using Refadium for getting the um, subtitles. Um, disqualify. So this was, and actually I left up, oh, I closed the browser page. Let me pull up the browser page. So um, with Survey Gizmo or Alchemer, it's renamed Alchemer. But um, we're, like I, I've mentioned, I'm doing a, a study for my buddy and um, it's, he, we had a lot of people that were hacking it, hacking it, not really taking the responses properly. And so you'll see someone say disqualified. Well, what we had to do was like take, hey, let's, from the data, I had this like ID, also another ID, which isn't, um, I would have to, let's jump way back to here. We'll see some, so some of these IDs. If I had this ID, I could search for FFRNZ, RNZ, and I think that should find it. <clears throat> yeah, and then go, oh, hey, I need to disqualify him. I don't want to do that. So let me just change this back. But as you see on these, there's a lot of IDs that don't have, a lot of respondents that don't have an ID. So I still have this ID in my data set. The problem is if I, let's say um, seven, let's 7629, if I look for 7629, hey, it doesn't find it. And it's kind of crazy, but you can't search off of this, which is nuts. Um, uh, that's weird. Okay. Well, I'll just go page by page. Well, look, there's 144 pages, but I can go one to four, but then look, I can only go to five. I can't jump around to the middle. So it's a nightmare. And what they had is they had, and you can see there's a lot of disqualifieds, right? We had a lot of these, so we disqualify. And I, somebody would have had to manually come in here, find them either through the search if they have that ID or go page by page looking for an ID and disqualify these by hand, and it would have been a freaking nightmare. But thankfully, um, Survey Gizmo has an API. We were already working with the API to extract the questionnaire and, and build the data set. So we just made a, an API call. We got a list of those qualifieds and used the API to loop over them. And in a couple seconds after we wrote the program, but that took us an extra like 15 minutes at the, at the most. Uh, but then we had a, a program. We could take a list and put them there, and, and it burned through them. And then back into here, this disqualify, we created that script. And let's see, let's see how it looks here. So you see how 
how simple this script is, right? Because here's our list of IDs, which we um, would provide. And uh, and you just run it. It uses our token. It gives it the, the survey ID and the token, which is hidden in this file here, and goes and burns through them in a matter of, you know, a, a couple seconds because it'll cruise through that really quickly. It just qualifies them. And so, man, what a time saver that was. This SBSS creator, that's where we're generating the, the data file and building and cleaning it up. Oh, man, it saves us so much time. Um, the unit testing, that's, again, we've talked about unit testing, and Isaiah's had that in there, which really helps you spot things. Uh, this is a client script where he's been doing some updates, and my main script, um, the search. I don't know why this updated last week. I don't know. I'm not sure. That Melissa data, you can append. I, that's where I was appending information to people via email address just to see what they had. And the auto run, this is the, the pre-version Eclipse, which I've talked about before. So Hopefully you enjoyed that. Like I said, it was a kind of a crazy busy week with automation, um, but we got a lot done. And also I was happy to hear, it sounds like we're going to have another employee starting here in a bit, hopefully. So we'll I'll let, keep you posted on that. It'd be pretty cool. It just means we'll be able to get more done and help more people. So thanks for watching. Uh, like the video if you learned something, if you want me to keep doing these, really helps us out when you like the videos because we get a lot more views and have a great day. Cheers.